Hello guys and welcome to a new video. So today we are going to be doing an unboxing of Eddie Musha Warlords on the Nintendo Switch. This is the physical edition which has only been released in Japan and nowhere else. Um, it was about £25 on NinNinGame.com. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, that converts to about US $30 I reckon. Uh, so anyways, we are going to be doing a review of the game. Uh, we're also going to be looking at what this port features in comparison to the PS2 original, which is now old and making me feel old. Um, so guys, I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, leave a like, comment or subscribe. It's much appreciated. And let's get on with this. So guys, we've got the front cover here, uh, which says Onimusha in Japanese. Well, that's a given. <laughs> Gosh, I sure as hell love this game. Okay, anyway, getting on with it. We have got the back cover here, uh, featuring some details about the game, again in Japanese, and also some details about the different control methods you can use. And yeah, the Pro Controller is a given with this one. Opening up the case, uh, just focus that a little bit more. We have got a little mini instruction manual, which has been seen in a lot of uh, Capcom's Japanese Switch releases, but obviously you don't really get an instruction manual like the old days, do you? So that's some new artwork of Samanosuke, I believe. Um, we've also got details of the control scheme, and we've also got a look at the graphic user interface. And then some more details on the back there. And there's also a little uh, mini leaflet in here, which I can't read, so we won't look at that. Uh, again, this is the reversible cover. Um, as you can see, that's really lovely artwork. And if we get a little bit closer, and then I'll just refocus that a little bit. There we go, we've got the little cartridge there. So, let's get on with the review. Released back in 2001 on Sony's PlayStation 2, and during the golden age era of games which changed the gaming landscape forever, like GTA 3, Shenmue, MGS2, Halo and Final Fantasy X, the game at the time was the first to sell a million on the system, and it was also an exciting twist on the classic survival horror gameplay made popular by Capcom's Resident Evil series. In fact, Onimusha, translated as Only Warrior, was rumoured to have started life at Capcom as an idea for a ninja version of Resident Evil, set in feudal Japan and featuring a ninja house similar to Resi One's mansion, where you would fight monsters with swords, use magic and avoid loads of booby traps. It was also to be released for the Nintendo 64 DD. It is also rumoured that a bug within Warlords inspired game designer Hideki Kamiya in the making of the Devil May Cry series. Another trend set up from 2001. Following this, the Onimusha series has spawned three direct sequels, an Xbox port of the original game, and also two spin-offs, all selling moderately well, but for the past decade, nothing new has been announced for the series, leading many to assume that Capcom has basically let the series die on its arse, although it has had classic status for a long time. Well here we are in 2019 with this HD remaster, ported by a new Chinese studio, Neobards. Uh, it is set during Japan's Sengoku period, and you take on the role of Samanofsuke Akechi, who is modelled on the likeness of veteran Japanese actor Takeshi Kaneshiro, who you may remember from House of Flying Daggers. The start of the game shows the assumed death of real-life historical figure, Warlord Nobunaga Oda, and after this you are sent a letter from a princess who fears that evil monsters called Genma are behind the disappearance of her servants within a castle. Arriving a bit too late to the party, and joined by your partner in crime, Kayade, who you get to control at certain points in the game, the princess, Yuki, is then kidnapped. So whilst you attempt to save her, you are badly beaten by a huge, ugly creature. Samanovsky is then visited by spirits, who give you the power to fight the Genma throughout your adventure and seal their dark souls away. No pun intended. I mean, the story is pure cheese, and the English voice acting is still cringing, but I wouldn't want that any other way. So basically the voice acting does great on you. However, you can change this to the Japanese audio track in this version of the game. 
The game, just like classic Resident Evil titles, features static backgrounds and balances action elements with puzzles and basic RPG upgrades. Uh, the game in contrast to Resident Evil features primarily sword combat and some firearms, but as you do progress through the game, you will gain elemental weapons, each with their own magic attacks. So after killing enemies, you are able to use the gauntlet to absorb red souls, which acts as currency. You are also able to absorb yellow souls, which replenish health, and also blue souls, which refill your magic meters. The game features varying difficulties, uh, simple as satisfying combat with defense and parry mechanics, uh, fluid character animation, and also features a dark realm where you fight waves of Genma across different levels in exchange for special items. It's worth noting here that this is a direct port of the original PS2 version and does not feature any of the upgrades, new environments or features added in the uh, 2002 Xbox port titled Genma on Emusha. I mean, you won't be getting chased by a near unkillable doll with scissor hands in this port, but perhaps this could be future DLC, who knows. Despite this, I have personally always loved this game and have had a blast revisiting it again here on the Switch and even while sat on the toilet. Anyways, uh, I do think the appeal of this game may depend on whether nostalgia is on your side, but nonetheless, uh, let's hope Capcom ports the sequels as well. Anyways guys, let's talk about what has been included in this port and how it differs from the original on the PS2. Oh, by the way, I haven't tested the PS4 version and the other versions of the, uh, the port, so this is a look at purely the Switch version. So, in this port, which displays at 1080p on your TV and 720p in handheld mode, the game features a widescreen option and a rock solid 60 frames per second performance, whichever mode you play in. There is also a new control scheme to meet modern gaming standards, a bit like what's been seen in the recent Resi 1 remake and Zero HD ports. The soundtrack's been updated, there's a new easy mode, uh, improved character models, a uh, new voice acting, and also many different language options um, in terms of text. There is also, just like in Bayonetta 2, an in-game trophy system which rewards you for multiple playthroughs. Uh, this is actually a good thing for the Switch, despite its lack of uh, trophy system and achievement system like the other consoles, especially at a time where we're now used to games being much longer than they were many years ago. So if you are a newcomer, uh, you may be puzzled by the fact that even on normal difficulty, you can complete the game, fully upgrade your weapons, and even complete the Dark Realm, all in the space of four hours. But nonetheless, as someone who loved this game back in the day, and as uh, somebody who enjoys linear games, which are becoming more rare nowadays, I have really enjoyed coming back to this, if only briefly. The combat as well, although now supposedly dated, is quite simple compared to recent games like, say, Dark Souls and the recent God of War. It may prove jarring, actually, to those who didn't play this back when it was first released. Not to say that newcomers are not going to like the game, but if you have an open mind and love old school survival horror games like I do, then there is a lot here to be enjoyed, especially considering it's fairly cheap to buy this. So, what are the bad points of this port? Well, the static backgrounds, which look fantastic back in the old days, look somewhat pixelated, especially if you're playing on a large display or a 4K display, and they can make the improved character models seem somewhat out of place. There's also lip syncing issues with the voice audio, which I can't remember being present in the original game, but now that I come to think of it, the voice acting is actually the same. Um, there's also many cutscenes as well where I've noticed uh, the characters seem to be shaken and stuttering, although this is minor, I'm sure it will be patched in the future. My biggest complaint though is the modernised control scheme, which we've uh, already touched upon. In this version of the game, you only get one control scheme which you cannot change, so the tank controls of old are confined to the D-pad, which I personally don't really get on with in terms of the Joy-Con and the Pro Controller for the Switch. Um, you know, I don't mind the tank controls, but the PS2 controller had a decent D-pad for this. And, mo and uh, most analog sticks were alright for this style of control also. My main problem is, with the full 360 degree movement, you can now do with just the analog stick. Um, a bit like in the Resident Evil ports I've just mentioned. Uh, this cannot be changed, again, and as this is classed as a modern design trait, it simply doesn't translate well in a game like this. Especially where your character has to traverse through all these different backgrounds 
I mean, I often found myself on many occasions struggling with some combat scenarios and was constantly having to flick the analog stick around between when they go through different static backgrounds. I hope that makes sense anyway. Regardless of this, the game still holds up fairly well, the animation is still rock solid, and I can forgive these minor quirks due to my bias towards the classic series. I mean, perhaps Capcom can provide more control options for the Onimusha port. Sorry, the Onimusha 2 port. So overall, this is a classic title which I can recommend on the Switch to both veterans and newcomers alike, and also those who will be hopefully maybe playing this on the PS4, Xbox One or even Steam. Uh, let's hope that the good sales will lead to further ports anyways. So guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give a like, give a comment, maybe subscribe. And uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the game. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have. So uh, in regards to this review, the game's just been released worldwide outside of Japan. Um, on Xbox, Switch, uh, PS4 and also Steam. Uh, you can get physical editions of this in America. So I'll leave some links below to that. Uh, again, uh, this physical Switch release has only been released in Japan. So I'll also leave a link to where you can get that also. So until next time, guys. If there is a next time, see ya.